Television. A turning point in the history of communication technology was a long progress which involved many people and stages of development. This modern convenience has changed the way that we're entertained, educated, and communicate with each other. The first TV we had was a Magnavox, and my mother had it until she was 80. Television all started back in the late 1800s. People had been dreaming of the idea of sending pictures through the air for decades. Then a spark of hope appeared. In 1873, the element selenium was discovered to have photoconductive properties. Selenium would react to electricity differently than other substances depending on its exposure to light. This would become the foundation of the mechanical television. Seven years later, a German engineer student, Paul Nipkow, designed and patented the world's first television based on the principle of selenium's properties. The earliest televisions that, that we had, there was no cable. We, every television came with its own antenna and the antennas on the television were called rabbit ears. And they were telescoping little like fishing poles that went up about three or four feet. And you had to move them around and sometimes you put a little flag of aluminum foil on them and you had to touch them and you, had, and you finally got a picture that was not ever clear, but it was pretty clear. Uh, but they were all black and white. In 1897, a professor named Carl Ferdinand Braun was studying in Berlin at the University of Marburg in electromotive forces when he invented the cathode ray oscillograph. An oscillograph is, quote, an instrument for measuring alternating or varying electric currents in terms of current and voltage. He would be shooting a electronic beam through a vacuum tube, and it will dissect and record the varying current and voltage of the electronic beam. Many claim to have invented a cathode ray tube before him, but he is the only one who has been proved right. This invention is a critical factor for the invention of the electronic television. Dr. Braun died in 1918. And they used to tune the television the way you tune the old radios with the, the needle that went back and forth across. And there were three television stations. In the 1920s, radio had been invented. This sparked the imaginations of many scientists to send pictures through the air as well as sounds. The American scientist Charles Francis Jenkins and the Scottish inventor, John L. Baird, competed to be the first to send televised pictures. Baird was inspired by the idea of television from reading the scientific journals that Paul Nipkow published. On May 19, 1922, Jenkins sent the first ever televised photograph, which he called a quote, radio photograph. Three years later, John Baird sent his first televised picture. By the time that John Baird had sent his first televised photograph, Charles Jenkins had already finished working on sending the first ever moving image. This was a slow-moving windmill. This process of sending images, Charles deemed radio vision. During the time that Charles Jenkins and John Baird had been working on the mechanical television, its successor had also been going through the works, electrical television. Two individuals were inadvertently competing with each other to invent this device. Vladimir Kuzmich Zaworykin, an American immigrant from Russia, 
He was born in 1890. He helped repair the electronic equipment on his father's rover boats at the age of nine. Later, he moved to St. Petersburg. His first professional career was in 1908, when he attended the Imperial Institute of Technology. Vladimir Zoroykin and the director of the school invented a hybrid television using Paul Nipkow's disc and Ferdinand Braun's cathode ray tube. After he immigrated to the United States, he started working at the Westinghouse Company, an affiliate of the Radio Corporation of America. While he worked there, he filed for a U.S. patent on December 1923, but the people at the patenting office turned him down because he didn't have a working prototype. In 1906, Philo Taylor Farnsworth was born inside a log cabin in Beaver, Utah. He was a farm boy, but he liked to read science magazines such as Science and Invention. When he was in ninth grade, he drew a sketch of how he thought a television would operate. By the time he was 19, he had an idea of how an electronic television would be configured. He found some investors and moved to San Francisco to start up a laboratory. Back at the Westinghouse's laboratory, Vladimir Zaworykin was working hard to create a working model, which in design was superior to Farnsworth. But this caused his project to extend longer than anticipated. The cable TV and the satellite TV, which has happened probably in the last 20 years or less, um, you know, more and more shows are, more and more stations and specific stations are coming into being. And David Sarnoff, the Radio Corporation of America's CEO, met Zaworykin. David Sarnoff was promised to have a working electronic television on the market in two years for only $100,000. By the summer, Zaworykin had created an electronic receiving device for his television. Because of this, the subject being scanned in the television didn't require hot, intense lights to be used. Zaworykin was working from the ground up on his invention. It was still developing when in 1930, Philo Farnsworth had successfully developed and patented his model. In 1931, unemployment soared up to 25%. This caused progress of the television to slow. In 1934, Charles Francis Jenkins, a founder of the mechanical television, died. In 1939, after $50 million in funding and a patent application sent 16 years before, Vladimir Zaworykin finally finished and patented his television. Meanwhile, Philo Farnsworth had been upgrading his television, but it still didn't compare to Vladimir's. His cathode ray tube translated the images at 50 times a higher resolution than Philo Farnsworth's original television. From 1939 to 1945, during World War II, the progress of the television was halted. On August 24, 1940, Paul Nipkow, the founder of All Television, died. Eight years later, Louis W. Parker, an immigrant from Hungary, invented a device that would receive the sound for television better than older methods. Because of this, televisions would cost much less. In 1956, color television was introduced to the public as a commercial product. The invention of television was a long progress, but it was a major turning point in the transforming of people's lives by affecting our education, communication, and entertainment. It is still improving today with satellite, ultra-high definition, 3D television, and more. you on TV all the time. Oh, gee. Oh, I'm all excited. Just think, Cedric Arborough, and, and I'm talking to him. Oh, Daffy. Ask me some questions. Daffy. Daffy. Go ahead, ask me. Daffy! Oh, 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 o